step on their home field for the first time this year against the Wolverines of Woodstown. I'm Ed Bank along with Tad Kazaneski at what we can say is clearly a very festival mood here at Williamstown. Tad, uh, and a lot of home openers throughout the past few years. Frankly, we've never seen anything like it. I feel like right opening day at Veterans Stadium right now. We're waiting right now. There's a parachute ahead that's going to come down the field. Right now, the Williamstown Braves you're looking at on the field just ran through a new teepee they just built. There's horses here at the one end zone. They just ran on the field. I just hope the parachute guys makes it down safely. And one team that is clearly on the rise instead of on the way down, the Williamstown Braves, Tad. Maybe the best turnaround in South Jersey in quite some time. This is a team that won one game last year. They are 2-0, and I think the page turner was last week down in Delsey. There's no doubt about it. That big win over Delsey is the first time that they've beaten Delsey in quite a long time. It goes all the way back to 1988. In fact, that's the last time they started the year at 2-0. So they are really fired up tonight with this home atmosphere that's really, as you mentioned, quite carnival-like tonight. They should be in good shape. And we just saw the horses come on the field as well. This is Williamstown's first home game this year. Their first two victories sure, against sure, Pennsville sure, sure. and Delsey came on the road. And now they return home tonight for the first time against Woodstown, a Woodstown team that in past years has been a very difficult team for a lot of teams, including Williamstown, to beat. However, lately they have not had their winning ways, and this is really a tough season for a terrific coach, Clinton Ware. And he's, he's the longest coach here in South Jersey, the most active coach, been here for 31 straight years. He's older. He's been coaching longer than you and I are old. Ed. That's how long he's been out here. The problem with them this year is depth. They have one returning starter on offense and defense, and that's an offensive lineman. And when you have a situation like that in a tough conference like this, you have your work cut out for yourself. And, of course, Williamstown is a team that pounds the football down the team's throat. We've seen it the last two weeks. I think it's an obvious trend coming up tonight. The Williamstown Braves plan could be off tackle left, off tackle right, belly pound, whatever you want to call it. This is a team that can run the football, and I think it's an even matchup tonight. When you look on the line, and obviously a matchup in Williamstown's favor. And they're three and four deep running the ball. These guys are outstanding with Lopez, Kuzak, Polar, done a great job running the ball. Great blocking up front. Woodstown's biggest problem is going to be depth. They're only about 35 players in their team. They're going to have a tough time stopping them. And one thing we did learn about Williamstown last week as we get set for the parachuters, we're going to try and have you get a look at them in just a moment when they come down. But while we await for the landing here, we talked about how Williamstown can run the football. Let's not forget something. Ed Newcomb certainly proved to everybody last week against Delsey. He is very capable of throwing the football. And the thing that impressed me most about Newcomb, and not only his passing ability, but if you think about it, his two field goals were the difference in the game. If he doesn't kick those two field goals, they probably lose that game to Delsey. So that is even a bigger factor, maybe not for tonight, but as their season moves along. And defensively for Williamstown, that certainly made the difference down the stretch against Delsey. A terrific pass rush. And a gentleman by the name of Willis Cooper, two interceptions last week, a fumble recovery for a touchdown the week before. And again, we are waiting for the Skydivers. What we understand, they're in the air and on their way down. But uh, while we wait for them, uh, defensively, that's another strength of the Braves, particularly the pass rush they've been putting on. They've put on a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That caused Delsey a ton of problems. The thing that impressed me is their skill position players. They do a good job anticipating where the ball is going to be run or thrown, and they always get to their spots defensively. They're real sound. And while uh, we wait just a little longer here, everybody's kind of looking up into the sky. Again, the parachuters are on their way down here. Uh, you look at this Tri-County Royal, Tad. Williamstown tonight has a Woodstown team that they are favored to beat. They have a Clearview team next week that they are favored to beat. These are the games that teams that are emerging as powers have to win. Hey, it's great to win at Delsey, but the big thing, avoid the L word, the letdown against a team on paper you're capable of beating. And that's a game where you just have to stay focused. I don't think that'll be a problem with Coach Fusatoli. He's been a leader throughout the years, does an outstanding job. I don't think it's going to be a problem tonight. Woodstown is a real struggling team. Clear view next year, they could present some problems in next week. And keep in mind, too, Williamstown's schedule gets very difficult down the stretch with teams like Gloucester Catholic, and here they come, folks. They have arrived with the game ball. Nice uniform. I like it. Very safe landing, too, as well. They are delivering the game ball. I think that's the first. There's another one heading down right now, and we'll get a look at them in just a second. And he's, he's coming down. He's going to make it right to the center of the field as you get a great look at it. Here he comes. He's got a jersey on, Ed. He's got the uniform on. 
What a job there. Hits it right at the 50-yard line. Now, what are the Woodstown kids thinking right now? Should we head back for the bus now, maybe? Well, I'll tell you what. I think the Woodstown side has to be enjoying the show, too. I think there's one more coming down, but you got to look at a couple of them. And I think the final one is heading down now. This will be our last one that we'll get to see as the air show continues up behind us. And he is heading right down to the center of the field. Touchdown. Wow, right on target. These guys, if they play half as good as Williamstown tonight, Williamstown's in great shape, Ed. Well, the crowd is certainly fired up, and right now it is time for us to step away as the parachuters finish their landing. Great atmosphere for football tonight. Williamstown taking on Woodstown, coming up next on Jones Intercable, Channel 13. Welcome back to Williamstown, everybody. Tack Kozineski, Ed Banken with you. Just about set for opening kickoff after one of the most dramatic starts of an opening home season you're ever going to see. Williamstown will take it at their own 15-yard line. This looks like Malone. That's Lopez, actually. Lopez up across the 35. Williamstown will take over first and 10 for the starting offense. Here's Ed. Thank you very much, Ted. Ed Newcomb, the quarterback for Williamstown. Now, they rotate four different backs, and so you will see Nick Lopez, Rich Poehler, Rich Williams, and Reese Jackson all carried and carried well against Delcy. Angel Crespo up front as a tight end, along with Marcus Ramsier, Brian Baker, Robert Sampson, Anthony Vezza, James Obest, and Jason Morgan make up the offensive line for the newly blue pants Williamstown Braves. On first and 10 for Williamstown, we'll give you the Woodstown defense after this play. First and 10 for the Braves. Hand off far side, beautiful job there. Met at this, the line of scrimmage on the carry by Polar. Give him about a gain of three, it'll be second and seven. And you hear down on the field throughout the night, we'll let you listen in a little bit to some of the sounds of the football field. But Jeff Cullen, the linebacker from Woodstown, really one of the top players on this football team. Here's a young man who is a returning starter. And for a team that's supposed to struggle, he has played very well. A five foot seven senior gives it all every time he's out there. Second down and seven coming up for Williamstown. Their second play from scrimmage. Their first home game in 1996. This is Jackson. Jackson near side manages to get maybe a yard. It's going to leave it third and five, but there is a penalty flag down. Flag came in late, and you had to believe the area was thrown. This will be an illegal block or a clip exactly against Williamstown. So not a good start for the Braves. And you know, Tad, we mentioned this is and maybe in some ways is almost as big a game as Delcy. People say that's crazy, but now that Williamstown has shown, hey, we're good enough to win on the road at Delcy, the sign of a contender just as important is to come back and beat a team you're supposed to beat. And they're, they're making some noise down there. Listen in. That's the guys hitting their pads, getting set. They'll mark off the 15-yard penalty. Again, Woodstown comes in this game at 0-2. Over the last five years, they are 16, 38, and 1. Their last winning season was 1991. So they have had some long, dry droughts on their football team. That's going to make it now. It looks to be second and 22 from their own 21-yard line. Right up the middle of the field with it. This is Polar. Polar, good running room. Nice tackle on the play made by Ben Pitts after a gain of about eight. Well, like we talked about at the top, uh, look for Williamstown to try and pound the football against a smaller Woodstown defensive line. That time just to play right up the gut. And Williamstown really needed that. Couple of bad plays. They get back on the penalty there, come right back, just basic smash mouth football. Polar does have two touchdowns on the year. That leads the team. It's going to bring up a third down and what looks to be 11. We'll call it 12. It's a long 11. Possible passing situation. Keeping it is Newcomb. He's going to roll with it. Gets around the corner. Gets the first down. Picks up a block. Finally taken out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Woodstown. But a big play by Ed Newcomb. Well, and the sideline certainly enjoys that. Ed Newcomb, as good as he is a quarterback with his arm, he can hurt you on the ground as well. And Tad, we saw it last week against Delcy, tremendous game on the ground. That's a backbreaker if you're a Woodstown fan too. Looks like they had good coverage down the field. He was a heads up play to get outside and gain the first down and get into Woodstown territory. First and 10 for the Braves in the 43 yard line of Woodstown. in motion is Williams. They give it to Williams. He's met at the line. Gets around the outside. He's got some open field with some speed. He may make it. Gets pulled out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A heads-up game-saving touchdown tackle by Steve Gilmore. And it's going to gain about 15. 
Well, Richie Williams has a habit of making people miss. <laughs> we saw the case right there. He was stopped in the backfield, and he turns a two-yard loss into a huge game. And, boy, the Braves come right back after a loss and a penalty. They're right back down into Woodstown territory. And again, Ed, Woodstown was there in the backfield. The linebacker was there to make the tackle, but they're not making the play, and Williamstown's really taking advantage of it. From the 24-yard line, first and 10 for the Braves. in motion now is Jackson. They give it up the middle to Lopez. Lopez lucky to get a yard as he's stacked up at the line of scrimmage, defensively led by Todd Ekes. What a game Lopez had last week on both sides of the football. What a lot of people don't realize is Nick Lopez had a bit of a back injury last week, had a pulled muscle in his back. <laughs> when you consider that 17-yard run against Delcy, it's amazing he was uh, showing any signs of injury. Lopez is a junior, 5'10", 190. Technically, he lost a half a yard on the play. Second and 10 coming up for Williamstown. And here the Williamstown bench getting into it. On second and 10, this is Lopez. Far side of the field with a wall of blockers in front. Lopez for the first down, taken down at the 11-yard line after a 15-yard gain tackle made by Steve Hurst. Well, that looked like a bit of a counter play because the left guard, James Obes, number 52, came around to the right side. He and the right guard, Robert Sanson, threw two tremendous blocks. You described it very well, Tad. It was a wall of blue to the outside. Beautiful job of the linemen of pulling as you look at the Braves bench, getting excited their first drive of the game. 9-15 and counting to play here in the first quarter. We have no score. They're just outside the 10, so they can get a first down at about the two-yard line. Hand off to the big man, Polar. Polar takes some defenders for a ride. Gets down to about the six-yard line. That'll be a gain of about seven. Where Damian Hyman finally running into him and bringing him down. But this is a critical stretch right here for Woodstown. They had Williamstown pinned deep. Williamstown now already in Newcomb field goal range. This is a huge, huge series right here for the Woodstown defense. If they can hold Williamstown to a field goal, they feel like, okay, they're right in this football game. But they come out, they give up a touchdown on the opening drive, and that's when teams that are supposed to struggle start really getting the doubts in their heads. Polar got four on the last play. It's going to leave it second and six, as you see on the scoreboard there. Deep inside. Big hit at the line of scrimmage made by Steve Gilmartin on the carry by Rich Williams. Well, combination of Steve Gilmartin with terrific speed and somebody missed a block because he came in untouched, but tremendous quickness right there. That's a terrific play by Gilmartin. Now, Woodstown right here, the same situation Delcy was last week when they held Williams down to a field goal. Third and five coming up, and you talk about the red zone, Ed. If you want to be a successful team, you got to score in the red zone. What's that I hear in the background, Ted? <laughs> Sounds like the chop is the, going. The chop is on. Third and five. Far side of the field going with it is Lopez. Lopez into the end zone. Touchdown. Braves lead it six to nothing. Boy, he made it look so easy, but the offensive line certainly helped. A huge hole for Lopez. He got down to about the two before he was even hit. And boy, what an impressive drive by the Braves. They wanted to play smash mouth footballs. The mini balls come out from the cheerleaders. They wanted to play smash mouth football. They certainly did on that drive. And coming in to kick the extra point will be Newcomb. He is two for three on the year, kicking extra points. Six nothing, your score, 740 to play here in the first quarter. Kick is long enough, and the kick is good. So Williamstown with 7.40 to play in the first quarter, leads it seven to nothing. There is head coach Frank Fusatola bringing his troops in after a very impressive touchdown drive. I don't know if we'll get to see that again, but boy, Nick Lopez barreling through a wide open hole before anyone met him. And there's Brian Baker, you see big number 75. He certainly helped on the outside, no question about that. Baker listed as 6 2 3 10. Here it is, here it is again, Ed. Here it is again. And look at that hole he had to go through. Brian Baker opening up some space. You got a great look at it there. What tremendous room for him to run. And, and Tad, it's the old cliche. This is one of us said, boy, you or I could run through that hole for a touchdown. But Frank, I'm going to Atlantic City soon. I think I might have to take him <laughs> up on that. Newcomb with the short kick to about the 15 yard line. Woodstown taking it up the field with it there. That's. Hits, I believe, he's put down on the ground. A beautiful tackle made there by Ed Newcomb, the kicker. 
where John Pitts got some room up the middle there. And Williamstown did give up a couple of long kickoffs against Delcy, and that time the seam opened up up the middle. Delcy special teams kind of formed that wall straight up for whatever which way they're going. That time Woodstown opened up a seam in the middle, and the blockers were able to do the job. Woodstown offense this year it has scored one touchdown. They averaged three points a game. They have given up an average of 32 and a half points a game. First and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Clark, the quarterback. Man in motion is Pitts. Quick pitch. This is Romano. Romano's going to lose four yards. Great defense in there. Newcomb leading the charge and a host of Braves. Well, when Woodstown lines up with that high formation, a lot of times they like to throw a toss to the outside, and the Braves are obviously very schooled on that right there as Mr. Newcomb, of course, finishing off that tackle. But again, for Woodstown, we talked about how it was critical for them to stop the Braves. It's just as critical for them now to get a long drive going because if they give it up on three and out here early in the first quarter, they're going to start to look upward in a hurry. So you mentioned they've only scored one touchdown this year. By the way, in the team series in the last five years, Williamstown has won all the games in the even years. Woodstown has won all the games in the odd years. Of course, this is an even year, so maybe it should go Williamstown's way, and it is right now, leading at 7-0. Clark back to pass. Screen pass near side for Gilmartin. Incomplete. It's going to bring up a third and 14. Well, Gilmartin got open just for a moment, got behind Rich Williams, but the pass was a little overthrown. And that time, uh, quarterback Clark just tried to lead him a little too far. Good call that time by Clint Ware. Unfortunately, from the Wolverine standpoint, it falls incomplete. It's very fortunate that it wasn't picked off, as you mentioned, because <laughs> the defender was right there, could have cakewalked into the end zone. Williamstown defensively doing the job. It's third and 14. Let's see if this is a passing down two wideouts to the far side of the field. Man in motion again, that's Pitts. Go right up the middle of the fullback, maybe got a yard. Great charge in there defensively. Nick Lopez in there leading the charge. Well, Bill Ware, the center, and the two tackles, Andy Dubois and Steve Hurst, uh, is really where the strength of that line lies. But unfortunately for them, that is also where the strength of Williamstown's defense lies. And if they're unable to run up the middle, run off tackle against Williamstown, it could be a very long night for the Wolverines. Fourth down and 13. They are in the punt. Williamstown receiver drops back at about his own 30-yard line to receive this. The kicker should be Steve, actually Steve Hurst is your punter. Let's see if Williamstown goes for it. It's a high snap. Good job by Hurst. Line drive kick. Could be returned. Boy, booms it right over the head of Ron Marr. Marr's going to let it go to the goal line. It goes into the end zone and a break for Williamstown there. That almost got down on the one foot line. Very big break too. And, and Mr. Marr had to be careful because after he let it roll, he almost touched it. And had he touched it and Woodstown falls on that football, then it's a free ball and Woodstown's got a touchdown to the ball on the one yard line. We talked about, Ed, the series between these two teams. Last year, Woodstown won this game 20 to 14. In 94, Williamstown won it 16 13. 93 was Woodstown's year at 10 8. Williamstown in 92, 21 7. And our only big score was in 91. Woodstown won that game by a score of 42 to 7. So the games have been fairly close. Right now, Williamstown leads at 7 0, 542 to play. Near side with it is Jackson. Jackson, maybe a yard or two. It's going to leave it second down and eight. Well, the advantage of these Williamstown backs is Nick Lopez can play some power football right up the gut. So can Rich Poehler. And Maurice Jackson and Richie Williams can throw the counter punch, a little thunder and lightning, and bring the speed to the outside. It's going to be second down and seven. Is Boy, the band is loud. The crowd is loud tonight. We are cranking it from Williamstown, their home opener. They come in 2-0 and oh under first-year coach at Williamstown, Frank Fusatola. Second and seven. Give it to the man in motion. This is Williams. Williams stacked up at the line. Nice tackle by Steve Hurst. Well, Woodstown had a chance to stop Williamstown before, and they gave up the big run to Ed Newcomb. That was the big play of the first drive for Williamstown. They're going to have to find a way now on this third down to come up with a stop. And it's critical for the Woodstown defense right here early on. They had to punt the ball away three and out. If they can stop Williamstown here, they'll have decent field position. Third down and what is now eight is they lost a yard on the play. Take your heart, 
Two wideouts to the near side. Nick Lopez and Mike Bateman. Back to pass is Newcomb. He's got plenty of time going deep, has a man open, tipped and incomplete. Nick Lopez was open by about five yards. The coverage led by Omar Hill to be fourth down. Not a bad throw there by Ed Newcomb. And as you mentioned, Lopez almost came up with a football. Ben Pitts managed to cover the ground with his speed, got there in time just to poke the ball away a little bit. Then it went off the helmet of Nick Lopez, but after power football, power football, not a bad call either to go for the long ball. If, if Newcomb got a little bit more on that, that's probably a touchdown and not a bad play on third down because if it's intercepted, probably just as good as a punt. So the punt team now on it, fourth down. Williamstown into punt. Back up, back up, guys, we're in the field. Is that Newcomb into punt? Newcomb is into punt. Two back for Woodstown. There are two men back. Nice high kick. Going to come down about midfield. Stays in play. And Woodstown going to give up possession as it's downed on the play by Ron Marr at the 38-yard line. Tad, you and I were here two years ago for a game with Williamstown where they played Gloucester Catholic. And I think you might remember this. Nick, Ed Newcomb was the punter. Two times he had a low snap. He had to run to avoid the rush. Not only avoided the rush, but got off two tremendous punts. So he certainly can do it, as we see, as a place kicker and also as a punter. 4.02 to play here in the first quarter. The Braves lead it 7 to nothing. Tad Kozineski, Ed Banken with you here on Jones Intercable Channel 13. Woodstown will take it over first and 10 at their own 37. Watching you, Marcus! Goes in motion, that's Pitts. Give it to the tailback. Romano, Romano stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard on the play, leading the charge in there defensively, Rich Polar. Where Polar, Comfort, and Newcomb all got in there to make the play, and boy, that's, <laughs> that's Woodstown coming out with their strength. They go to the off tackle, play to the left. Nothing doing against this Williamstown defense early on. Gonna bring up a second down and 10 for Woodstown. They have not gained a yard yet, and matter of fact, they have lost a total of three yards on offense thus far. Williamstown defense looking very impressive. Second and 10. Two wide outs to the far side. Back to pass now is Clark. A rainbow out of play, far side. Trying to get that up to John Pitts, incomplete. Well, Tad, I'll tell you why that was a rainbow, because big number 70, Jason Morgan, came in and laid a lick on Clark just as he got that football away. Clark actually doing a nice job of getting that football away before getting clobbered. And the defensive front of Williamstown is winning the battle in the trenches so far. With 3.12 to play here in the first quarter, it's going to bring up a third down and 10. They're still looking for their first positive play from the line of scrimmage. Their best play thus far has been the kickoff return by Pitts. As we mentioned, Woodstown has only scored one touchdown this season. This is their third game. Third and 10. Back is Clark with time across the middle and it's dropped. Had a receiver there intended for John Pitts. He dropped it and on comes the punt team. Tim Newcomb breaking that play up, Ed's brother. And that time Clark had the time partially because Williamstown dropped back into some nickel coverage and they had a few more defensive backs in the football game. That's just good coverage and it shows how solid this Williamstown defense is from top to bottom. So Woodstown into punt. Back to take the kick will be Ron Marr. Nice snap there, no real pressure on. Marr may have a chance to bring this back. Over his head as he misjudges it, and it'll be downed on the play by Ben Pitts. It'll be first and 10 from the 21 now for Williamstown. Well, the Braves, after that impressive first drive, have, if nothing else, been able to shut down Woodstown. We'll see what they can do with the football, and there you get a look at Willie Comfort coming out of the game. Tad, there's no question this team, if nothing else, is bigger, not just in the amount of players on this football team, but size-wise up front, that's largely due to the fact that Frank Fusatola and his coaching staff have a strong commitment to the weight room for their players. <laughs> Flexing there is Al McDowell. He's at 240, <laughs> he's a sophomore. He'll get, his, he'll get his turn. Looking like the big man there, pumping <laughs> you up. 2.54 to play, first quarter, 7-0 Williamstown. Their own 21-yard line. Man in motion is Jackson. 
They go right up the middle. This is Polar. Polar does a good job to get maybe three yards. Another strong run as Polar tries to feed off that left side. And again, that's right around the neighborhood of James Obest and Jason Morgan. Jason Morgan is one of those seniors who talked a lot about how he was sick of losing and he was ready this year. And, uh, you know, you had to be especially happy for the seniors last week who had to suffer uh, through pounding after pounding against Delsey. You could see Brian Baker, number 75, the left side of your screen. 6'2", 3'10". I think that one is a bit of a misprint on, your, on, your wow. sheet, on our sheets. Up the middle now. Good running room to the outside. This is Lopez. Lopez for the first down, racing down the sidelines. Finally tripped up by Ben Pitts, and that might have gone the distance had Pitts not made the tackle. Yeah, that's a tremendous play by Pitts. The two corners, Ben Pitts and Ron Pitt and John Pitts rather for Woodstown, have some tremendous speed, and I think that was the difference. But one thing about Nick Lopez, he will run hard every single time he carries the football. Here it is again, and you take a look at the outside. Look at the room he has again. You got a great look at it. Nobody near him for about six yards, and then the rest is done by Nick Lopez. It's a 40-plus yard gain for Nick Lopez, who now has unofficially 59 yards on three carries. First and 10 now in Woodstown territory. This is Jackson. Jackson, good run up the middle for about six or seven. And again, Jackson is getting, and the running backs are getting a good three or four yards before they face that initial hit because this offensive line is really doing a fine job knocking off some of the defensive players for Woodstown. And they have a couple decent players in the form of Adamopoulos, Ware, and Hyman. These guys can play some serious football up front, but so can the Williamstown offensive line. 136 to play here in the first quarter, 7 0 Williamstown. Second down and about four coming up. This is Polar. Polar's going to get the first down and a few more. Brought down on the play by Steve Hurst. It will be a first down. Jason Morgan again throwing the block out there and plenty of room once again for Williamstown to run. They don't need the big play. Hey, if they get it, they won't complain. They can get it four or five yards at a time right now. The way this offensive line is already starting to wear down that 50 defense of Woodstown. Polar comes in at 6'1", nearly 200 pounds. A timeout is called on the field. There you see Coach Fusatola with the Braves. And while we have a moment, we'd like to tell you about Tad, a brand new sponsor here on Jones Center Cable Sports, our good friends at A. King's Limo, offering corporate transportation with new limousines, Lincoln Town Car Sedans, dependable, courteous service. They have prompt airport transportation at reasonable rates. They'll go to Philly, JFK, LaGuardia, Newark, AC International, and also the New York and Philadelphia docks. Hey, they go anywhere. In fact, they have their frequent travel Traveler discounts at A. Kings Limo. The telephone number is 1-800-649-5919. Hey, don't forget the holidays are coming up. They'll be happy to keep your holidays safe for office parties, nights out, New Year's Eve. They offer special deals for their limousine service. You get the royal treatment at A. Kings Limo, the very best in the business. Hey, for later in the year, proms, weddings, no matter what you might need a limousine for, A. Kings Limo, the place to be happy to provide limousine service for your company's holiday party and again. Mention you heard their ad right here on Jones Inter Cable Sports, and you get a free hour of limousine service. A great combination at A-King's Limo. Let them do the driving for you. Call them at 629-2240. That's 629-2240. First and 10 play coming up for the Braves. 121 to play first quarter. They lead it 7 to nothing. Newcomb positioning the offense there. Have a wide out the far side in motion is Jackson. They give it to Jackson. Jackson mount the ball's fumbled and Williamstown loses the ball. Woodstown is going to pick it up. A great job there, Ed, on the recovery. Recovered by Steve Gilmartin and a big hit. That was a big hit and what was amazing about that is everyone just seemed to stop for a second, but finally, alertly picking that up with Steve Gilmartin and here it is again, boom, whoa, what a hit laid on by Damian Wyman. And they get the fumble recovery, got a good second look at it right there. And Really, not too much to fall to Maurice Jackson. That was a serious hit, got the helmet on the football. That really keeps Woodstown in the game with 1.14 to play in the first quarter. They trail it 7-0 because it looked like Williamstown was driving down the field. Two wide outs to the far side, could be a passing down on first and 10 for the Wolverines of Woodstown. Back to pass is Clark, he's got time. Arks went up far side, a jump ball intended on the far side for Pitts. He's really got to watch himself, Ed. He's really looping up some balls there. Well, very interesting that Clint Ware has chosen to put the ball up as many times as he has so far this game. Of course, they try to run the football when they can, but 
Obviously, aware deciding if he's going to do anything against this Williamstown defense, he has to establish some kind of air attack, if nothing else, to try and balance out the running game. And so far, the Williamstown pass rush, they don't have a sack on Clark, but they have a couple of knockdowns. Dangerous passes, though. If I'm Williamstown defense, the secondary, you look for that pass, look for the anticipation, because he's fairly easy to pick off. Second down and 10. Clark back again, scrambling to his left, has a little bit of room, fumbles the football, and Poehler recovers it. So they return the favor, and Williamstown picks up the ball first and 10 from the 30 of Woodstown. Poehler recovers it, and Ed Newcomb forces the strip. And Ed Newcomb, that is a textbook strip tackle right there as he came from the blind side on Clark. Here it is again. Look at that play by Newcomb. Clark is holding the ball you saw up above his shoulders. Newcomb just grabbed that right arm, knocked the football away. And the capacity crowd behind the Braves bench, obviously very happy. There you see some of the crowd right in front of us. And winning will do that for you, Ed. They are <laughs> packing them in here. At a very large contingency down in Franklinville last week. First and 10, this is Polar. Polar stacked up at the line, brought down by Todd Ekus. Maybe a gain of two. It's a strong play by Ekus, and this is where Woodstown has to dig into the trenches again. And boy, if you're Clint Ware, you have to be frustrated. You get the break, you get the turnover, and suddenly you give it right back. Buna did the same thing against St. Joe's last week, and before we knew it, a 7 0 game was 35 0 at halftime. 33 seconds and counting to play here in the first quarter. 7 0 Williamstown holds the lead. It's second down and eight. Send the man in motion. Newcomb on the pitch, going with his Williams. Williams tries to get around the outside. Beautiful job on the tackle there by Steve Hurst, who plants him right into the ground. Nice tackle by Steve Hurst, and a nice job by really the entire Woodstown defense. On that delay, nobody was fooled. Nobody went to the inside. Everybody merged over to the near side of the field, and really there was no room for Rich Williams to string outside. Williams run. Will and that is going to do it for action here in the first quarter. Braves leading the Wolverines seven to nothing. Ed and I will be back with more here on Jones Inner Cable right after this. With a score, Williamstown seven, Woodstown zero. Let's go. Third down and five play coming up. Nice running room with it is Lopez. Lopez gets the first down and a gain of about 10 yards. Lopez is the man I'd want to see carry the football on a third and five. It's worked out so far for them tonight. Second time he's converted on a third down play. Actually the third time. And Williamstown I think just going back to the basics here a little bit so far. I think you're going to see a lot of power football once again on this drive. Tack Kazaneski, Ed Banken with you here. Second quarter action on Jones Inner Cable Channel 13 with Williamstown leading it's seven to nothing this is our second play of the second quarter here's polar polar right up the middle by one man can't get by the third tackle him to play by steve hurst after a gain of about five steve hurst is a fine two-way player on this football team and really the heart and soul of this team as well really can do it on both sides of the football as a tackle and 6 one 220 he is a senior and he wears williamstown or woodstown pride on his sleeve no question about it. he comes to play every single down real tough competitor Second down and five for the Braves. They can get a first down at about the four yard line. This is Williams. Williams with a big hole far side of the field. Close to the first down, he might be a yard short and a gain of about four. Tad, I've lost count of the number of times we've said big hole on a play because that is what you are seeing so far. Just tremendous running room. It's now we're at the third and short situation. Williamstown, you gotta believe they're gonna run right up the gut again, do something off tackle. Uh, a situation here, a lot of different options. Even though it is third down, I think they're looking at fourth down territory. Third down and what is called a long one here. They need about a yard and a half, and usually this has been polar territory. There is Polar up the middle. Polar looks like he has enough for the first downs. He gets down to the two yard line where he's tackled by John Pitts. You see the crowd there looking on. Uh, the second effort, I think, really was the difference. He would have probably made it anyway, but that was kind of the exclamation point. And, and Tad, if you're the Woodstown Wolverines right now, uh, your backs are against the wall. First and goal from about the two yard line. Williamstown cruising as you look at the Braves and the sidelines. 
Here's Polar up the middle, stacked up at the line. Nice tackle by Steve Hurst, the senior. As Steve Hurst really did the job, and he got some help from his friends up front as Bill Ware and company were able to occupy the two blockers and really clog the middle, really no running room that time. There you see Willis Cooper, a sophomore, joined in there by Tim Newcomb. Tim's got the do-rag on, he's ready to go. They lost about a half a yard. It'll be second and goal from about the three and a half. Here's Lopez. Lopez buried another nice hit again by Steve Hurst. So quick off the snap, and he did a fine job that time of really getting off the ball very quickly. Read the snap count very well, got a tremendous burst, and came in untouched. And I don't care if you're Nick Lopez, or Ed Newcomb, or Barry Sanders, there's no way you're going to get out of that. Hurst is 220 pounds. It was almost like he was in on the huddle on that play. They're going to lose about two on the play. It'll be third and goal from about the six. They may decide to put one up here, Ed. You might even see Newcomb try and roll out to the far side and have the option of either throwing or running. He's going to roll. There he's rolling up for the end zone. Has a man there. Touchdown caught by Angel Crespo. And it's now 13 to nothing, Williamstown. Well, a good call. There it is on the replay. He's got the far side of the field and a great job by Newcomb because Damian Hyman got free of his block, came in and hit at Newcomb. But Newcomb did a fine job able to throw that pass away. And one thing Newcomb does very well is he stays cool under the rush, can throw a good pass under the rush. Did so right there. Angel Crespo, a little juggling act, but he pulled it in. The coverage was there, but he got the pass where it had to be. Good job by Newcomb there on the touchdown pass. In for the extra point is Newcomb to be held by Jeremy Grimes. Trying to put them up 14 to nothing. The kick is long enough and it is no good. Wide left, so Williamstown drives down the field. Can't get the full seven. They lead it 13 to nothing. Just hooked that kick right there. The snap was a little low. They did a good job of getting it up, but just that split second can disrupt the kicker's timing. Other than that, though, just a tremendous drive again by Williamstown. As you look at the bench there, had a good trend for Williamstown this year. This is the third game they have scored first. So far, they are 2-0 and when they've scored first. And again, uh, pretty much running with power throughout most of the play. And then Ed Newcomb, he's, a, he's an interesting character in the fact that as you see, the kick missed wide, no good, just hooked that to the left. But one thing about Newcomb, in addition to being a good kicker, this year was a quarterback. Last year, he was a running back. The year before, he was a wide receiver. So to be able, in your first year as quarterback, to pick up the system and do as well as he is doing really shows a lot. And he's not the tallest guy in the world. He doesn't have the strongest arm in South Jersey. He doesn't have, he says, good mobility. He's not Kyle Jenkins as far as mobility. But at the same time, he's able to do all those things and do them very effectively. I believe, Ed, that is Newcomb's first touchdown pass on the year as all their other scoring was done on the ground. Does have a two-point conversion toss this year, but uh, you're right, everything else on the ground or one actually through defense as well as Cooper took a fumble recovery back 74 yards in Pennsville. So Newcomb in to take the kickoff. They lead it 13 to nothing with 8.44 to play until the half. Woodstown with the big return here, Ed, can try to get themselves back in the game because they still do not have any positive yarding, yardage on offense. Newcomb with a nice kick. This goes back to the goal line. Bring it up now is Pitts. Pitts goes nowhere. Tackled on the play by Tim Newcomb. Great coverage by Newcomb. Tim Newcomb and Rich Williams, everybody getting in there, and that's just tremendous speed to get down on the field. And special teams makes a difference here and there. And I look where the ball is. We see it on the 15, and every 15, 20 yards, that certainly makes a difference. Woodstown Ed has only had one positive yard from scrimmage. Cullen ran the ball for one yard. Romano has lost three yards, and they are 0 for 5 passing it with a fumble. Tad, this stat, Williamstown is uh, going into games in which parachuters fly onto the field. <laughs> I've always had a first-half lead. <laughs> just a quickie stat that just came up over the wire. In case you missed it, they did parachute in before the game. Clark back going deep near sidelines. It's a duck. Up for grabs, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Ron Moore. Now, 
There he is right in your living room, and here it is again. Tad said it was a duck. He threw it up for grabs with Ben Pitts, the speedster streaking down, but Ron Maher with tremendous coverage. Ron Maher Jr., 5'9", 160, in great position as you're right down on the play with the referee there. That was a great play. There you see, you just saw him way in the background, head coach Frank Fusatoli. You see him at the bottom of your screen right now, pointing out there. And boy, Williamstown already now with their second turnover caused against Woodstown. They're in business midfield. 8.28 to play in the first half, 13 to nothing. They lead it. Here's Polar up the middle. Polar lucky to get a yard. Stopped in there in the play by Steve Hurst. Steve Hurst certainly racking up the tackles early on. And yeah, he, you could tell he's just well-schooled. He follows teams. He's a, a great student of the game, and the fact that he seems to pick up opposing offenses very well. And he's made a couple plays that, that's just instinct. It's, it's nothing that can be taught. It's just something that the good football players have. As you can see, it's second down, second and 10 coming up. 7.58 and counting to play until the half. Send two wide outs to the near side. The pass is Newcomb. Great protection. A bullet in and out of the hands on the near side of the field for Angel Crespo, who is open. Or Tab, maybe Ed Newcomb should should be allowed to be pressured because whenever he's under pressure, he throws a tremendous pass. At that time, I think maybe he had all the time in the world and just threw that one just a little high right there. But uh, he's a lot of mistake every now and then. That's for sure the way he's played so far this year. Newcomb passing thus far, Ed, is one for three for six yards with the touchdown. He was four of seven last week, and all four were huge completions against Delsey. Third and 10, two wide outs to the near side of the field. Let's see if they come back with the same type of play. This time it looks like a reverse. Taking it is Williams. Williams met at the line of scrimmage. Now they chase him down. That may be a clip. Now they fight for the ball. Lucky to get back to the 50-yard line as Woodstown was just going after the ball and almost got it away. Well, that draw, that uh, reverse rather took a little long to develop, but I think you could see it coming. And in fact, we saw it coming up here, and the Woodstown defense saw it coming. So instead of pulling all the way over to the near side, they pretty much stood their ground. There it is on the replay right there. Good job by Williams to get away from one man before he's finally gang tackled. And boy, coming in to throw that block, as you mentioned, Williamstown was James Obest. It's a nice block, but it was close to a clip, Ed. The rule of thumb is if you can see the numbers on the back. It was officially a clip, Ed, as they're just signaling it now on the field. So it was called a clip, but it'll be declined. Now Woodstown has to get the football back right now. They're in a situation they can accept the penalty, keeping in mind that Williamstown has had some big plays. Now they're in a situation they get Williamstown, obviously fourth down, to punt it away. So Newcomb will come in to kick. He's had a couple nice punts in the afternoon. Pitts is your man back for the most part. Has returned a majority of the action back there with Pitts. Both Pitts, it's John and Ben. They're both juniors. Little confusion for Williamstown. Now looks like they're ready to get the butt off. Boy, they almost blocked it. Fair catch. Signal at the 20 yard line, first and 10 Woodstown. Well, you're right, Tad. They almost got in and made that block, but uh, Newcomb does a fine job just to get that away. Another good high kick. Incidentally, for Williamstown fans, this programming note, if you wanted to see Woodstown, Williamstown take on Clearview next week, we made a little scheduling change at Channel 13. Unfortunately, we will not be able to bring in that game, but coming up next month, we will have Williamstown taking on depth. Now, Township fans wanted to see Township Bowling Row. We made a switch for you, too. We will be in Marlton early November to have Washington Township and Cherokee in place of that game. 6.48 to play in the first half. First and 10 for Woodstown. They trail 13 to nothing. Clark on the handoff up the middle. Good running room for Cullen. Cullen going to get about seven. Real tough runner in Jeff Collins, just a hard-nosed fullback, runs hard every down and actually broke that first tackle, turned about a one-yard gain into a seven-yard gain. Going to bring up a second down and three. Again, the clock continues to Eddie, run with 628 right. and counting. So here the coaches, we have a microphone right in Watch with the coaches there, and you can hear the coaches behind us for Williamstown. We got, coach. Second and three. Give it to the fullback, Cullen again, lucky to get a yard. 
stacked up by Polar at the line of scrimmage. Also in there on the tackle, Willie Comfort. Absolutely. Well, that, that's a play there where just <laughs> the helmets go against the helmets, power football, and this time the battle is won by Rich Polar in the trenches. Did a great job really coming up hard with a tough runner, bringing him right back. That's a fine defensive play by Polar, closing up that hole. On, Gonna bring up a third down play upcoming for the Wolverines who trail at 13 to nothing. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. Trying to get the defensive signals there is Tim Newcomb. Third and three, we'll call. Oh, watch pass here. Give it on, Jimmy. Watch See if Clark elects to put it up like the coaches think he might. Near side of the field, cutting it back is Pitts. Good running room up the middle of the field. Pitts in a foot race. One man to catch him is Marr. Marr brings him down at the 25. It's going to be a gain of nearly 45 yards for John Pitts. Great burst of speed off that side. And that was a little bit of a delayed pitch right that time. And Pitts did a nice job of waiting for his blockers and finding the hole. And then he did the rest. We've heard about the speed. There it is again. Look at him just explode up the middle. Some good blocking. You saw Maurice Jackson. They got a late block on him, a good clean block to string him off, and Ron Marr able to save the touchdown. 5.06 to play here in the first half, 13-0 Williamstown. If Woodstown can get some points here, Ed, we've got a game. They only have six on the year. They were shut out by Pennsville, lost 45-6 to six to Delcy. Up the middle with it, going nowhere with that. Maybe a yard for Andy Romano. We'll give him two yards and be generous. One other advantage this Williamstown team has this year is because they're a little deeper, they have the numbers this year as far as the amount of people out on the field. They can have a lot of substitute situations defensively. Woodstown does not have that luxury. They bring up a second down and eight for Woodstown. 4.25 to play in the first half. They trail at 13 to nothing. Williamstown doing a great job thus far. They split the wideouts. Up the middle of the field on the draw. Now a pass play into the end zone. Did he catch it in bounds? Yes, he caught it in bounds. Now there's a penalty flag down. This may come back at the penalty flags were thrown late. And that What that was is the wide receiver came over on the option play. Coming in to make that throw was Steve Gilmartin. He took the pitch on what looked like was going to be reversed. And he threw the pass. Tad, I think, I'm not sure, that flag came after the touchdown. Get down, get up! They're going to pick up the flags now. Nothing's going to be declined. It is a touchdown. What a play for Woodstown. That was a roughing the passer penalty. And boy, a big play right there. And there you see the celebration by Pitts. But Woodstown really needed that. You had to believe 13 0 that Williamstown was in business to put them away. But Clint Ware going into the bag of tricks and comes out with a tremendous play. Hopefully we'll get a peek at that one more time, Ed, because that hit us so hard, and that was also a good misdirection. It was a very hard play to follow. It's a hard play to follow for the Williamstown defense, obviously, as well. Well, again, Clint Ware is one of the best coaches of all time in South Jersey. He doesn't have the numbers. He doesn't have the talent he's had in year, years past. And, and this is why Woodstown is going to stay in some games this year, because he's going to come up with some plays like that. That is so well executed. And one thing we did see with Williamstown last week on the second touchdown by Delcy and a couple other plays, they can be a bit susceptible to some play action. So far this year, they've left a couple of men open. That's just a great call right there. I'd love if we could to take a peek at that if possible, because I'm trying to figure out who caught that if we could. Do well, you don't even know who caught that? Pitts I, caught it for the touchdown, but okay. and that was John Pitts, number 26, the wide receiver. We have a break here. and well, While we have a moment, folks, we told you about a couple scheduling changes, a couple things on course. Next week, we will see Edgewood for the first time against Camden Catholic, and then two weeks from tonight, Shawnee. Washington Township, folks, that's going to be one of the best games of the year. Again, they have not converted an extra point. This is only their second touchdown of the year. So Woodstown in. They are 0 for 1 kicking. It looks like Steve Gilmartin in to take the kick. Faking it. Man open in the end zone. Did he hold it in bounds? No. That was a beautiful fake. Two-point conversion, not good. The pitch, it is still 13-6. We'll get a look at that again. Here it is again. Watch this on the play. 
There's the delay. Gil Martin, such a good fake. It fakes our camera guy. And that flag, you saw him go down. There's the touchdown by Pitts. But you saw Rich Williams come in. He got a roughing the passer penalty, and that's what those flags were about. So now Williamstown still with the lead, but not, I think, in a position they expected to be after that second touchdown. So your score at is 13 to 6, 407 to replay here in the first half. Good job by our crew in the truck to give us another look at that because I was completely faked out in that, Ed. That was just a great fake. That really was. And uh, yeah, obviously, when the Woodstown coaches uh, t were talked to us this week, in fact, I talked to Coach Ware, he said they had a few surprises planned for the week, and obviously he wasn't going to reveal what they were. And if you're a Woodstown team, that's what you have to do. You come in here as a heavy underdog against a team that's riding a big emotional high right now off that Delcy win, and, and this is the way Woodstown is going to find a way to stay in some ball games this year. They come up with some plays, and, and let's give credit to that entire offensive unit. They executed that play very well. There you see Steve Gilmartin, the senior. He'll kick it off. Lopez back to receive. Joined also back there, Jackson. 13-6, Woodstown trailing the Braves of Williamstown. <laughs> They're going to move our cameraman. He's saying he's on the field. Yep, there he goes. Sorry about that at home, folks, but uh, <laughs> the game was being held up, so we, we had to give you an earthquake shot just for a second. Can't be standing on the field. you got to give him an A for effort. He was right out there. Maybe he can make a tackle for that Terry Woodstown Cadigan, team. Terry Cadigan is doing a fine job down on the field tonight. Woodstown brings it up. This is Williams. Williams stacked up and tackled by guess who? Steve Hurst. Talk about a, a really fine game, too, and he's helped keep this Woodstown team in. And now let's see how Williamstown responds. So far this year, they've done a great job of when somebody scores on them to come right back. They did that against Delcy last week. Let's see what they can do this time. They have 3.59 to operate with here in the first half, leading it 13 to 6. They'll pick it up at their own 29, first and 10. Newcomb passing the ball again, one for three for three yards. Here's Lopez. Lopez, pretty good blocking in front, going to gain about four. And now we'll see if Williamstown decides to mix it up a bit on this drive. But as Tad mentioned, with 3.45 and counting, they have time to work here. Not in a need of a rush right now. Let's see if they stick with the basics. A nice playoff tackle right there by Lopez just to get him going. Gets him out to just about the 33-yard line. Clock running, 3.30 to play in the first half. Second down and five upcoming for the Braves. Give it to the man in motion, that's Lopez. Lopez right into your living room, gains the first down. Second and third effort, gets him out the 46-yard line to gain a 13. Well, as we know, Nick Lopez usually will not go down on the initial hit. He keeps fighting and fighting and fighting for that extra yard. And again, a terrific surge on the right side line. There it is again, look at that block. Brian Baker, you saw it, absolutely cleared it as he opened up some space. Terrific job by that man, number 75, to throw that block on the right side. Clock is stopped for the moment for an equipment check for Woodstown. 3.13 to play in the first half, 13-6 Williamstown. Look, lost an earpiece out of the helmet, one of the defenders for Woodstown. Actually, this is good for Woodstown because their defense gets a second just to kind of catch their breath there after a couple of tough running plays against them. Now we're ready to put it back into play. Clock runs now, 3-10 and counting. Let's go, Here's Polar. Polar right side gets across midfield to the 48 where he's tackled by Jeff Cullen. It's a gain of about six. And again, Williamstown is getting four to six yards in almost every first down carry. And even though Woodstown is hanging in this game, they're going to have to do something right now. No huddle offense. Second down and four coming up for the Braves. Man goes in motion is Lopez. They give it to Lopez. Flags are down. Lopez is going to get the first down. Tripped up at the 35. Probably going to come back, though. Boy, three flags go down, so all the officials saw one thing. An illegal shift right there against Williamstown. And 
Well, you know, this is the first time we've seen the Braves use the no huddle. And on any level, high school, college, or NFL, it can be a very complicated system to learn and to work with, especially when you have a quarterback in his first year. And, and so you might see this a little bit early on for teams, especially a team like Williamstown, to give them the new quarterback that goes with the no huddle. There you see the signal from our referee tonight, Mark Morey. That is the second penalty of the game against Williamstown, now penalized for 20 yards. 2.32 to play until the half. Williamstown leading at 13-6. It'll be second down and nine. In their wing T offense. Fake it to Lopez. Back to pass, Newcomb, wide open, Poehler. Poehler for the first down. Far side of the field, taken down at the 30-yard line. Nice tackle by, guess who? Steve Hurst. And he had to come all the way across the field to make that play, but very, very well executed on that play by Williamstown as they come with that pass. Newcomb is so effective at rolling the opposite way and then still being able to get set. He threw a strike to Rich Poehler, who was wide open, caught the Woodstown defense napping. Newcomb now two for four for 31 yards. First and 10 from the 31. 209 in counting to play in the first half. Man in motion now is Williams. Newcomb is going to be sacked. Beautiful pursuit in the backfield by Omar Hall, a sophomore now. The quarterback appears to be injured, Ed. Well, this does not look good. Ed Newcomb went down and again, hopefully he just pulled something right there. and. Then Boy, you know, he got wrapped up around the ankle, so that could mean a lot of things, but this is not good for Williamstown now. He is in some pain. The training staff out there, they see Coach Fusatola. Boy, if he goes down, Ed, that is one loss they can't absorb. Here it is again. Ooh, that's the, you're right, that's the ankle, Ed. So Ballerini into quarterback on second and 17. This is Lopez. Lopez tries to get around the corner, cuts it back in and goes nowhere. A loss of a yard or two leading to charge Omar Hall. Well, you're right, Ted. Uh, exactly right, as a matter of fact, is Woodstown knows Williamstown's going to have to run the football here a little bit. In fact, third and long here, even though they're in Woodstown territory, especially now with Newcomb, their kicker not in the game, they may just run it here, try and regroup and get adjusted with the new quarterback. I'm a little surprised with it being third and about 20, 20 or 22. They're calling it third and 20. I'm surprised Woodstown didn't take a time out there. Don't know officially how many they have left, but again, you can probably assume this is going to be a running play here, and they are in running formation. Williams goes in motion. Polar up the middle. Polar on his feet. Gets about six yards where he's taken down by John Pitts. Penalty flags fly. We'll see if this goes against Woodstown. Ted, I think Woodstown would have taken a timeout if the ball was deeper in Williamstown territory. Here, it's it's already, it starts to play for the line of scrimmage at the 40, so they're figuring they're going to get pinned. It's against Woodstown. That may be a personal foul. I missed the signal. Again, uh, Ed Newcomb is being attended to on the sideline right now. And it, uh, we won't know if it's anything serious with that wrist until they get an x-ray. They mark it off. Boy, if this is 15, this may give them the first down, Ed. It does. It's a personal foul. 15 yards gives the Braves a first down. Keep in mind here with 55 seconds to go again, normally this is Ed Newcomb range. He can hit from 30 plus yards, but Williamson has to think six here with their kicker out. Again, your new quarterback in the game, John Ballerini. Now another switch, Tad, as we have Willis Cooper in a quarterback. So Cooper in, thanks, Ed. Rolling is Cooper. Penalty flags fly. This play will not count. Probably you'd have to think against Williamstown. This is tough for any quarterback coming in. And again, it's a cold night, too. So the one advantage with Willis Cooper, as we know and as we've seen with this play in the secondary, he's a fast player. So I, I'm guessing, and again, this is the first time we're looking at him as we see the false start marked off against Woodstown. He's the kind of quarterback that is a mobile quarterback, a lot like Eric Mitchell of Edgewood. He could do a lot of running as well as throwing. Cooper, also a sophomore, 5'10", 150, is number 19. This is going to be first and 15, 37 seconds and counting to play in the first quarter. Cooper with a quick out near side, caught nicely by Crespo. Crespo going to need to get out of bounds. I don't think he did. Nice tackle on the play by Pat Ray. Clock runs, and now Williamstown's going to spend the timeout. 
Well, the Braves take the time out here, and, and, and if you're sitting at home, you're wondering, geez, you know, you know, why that quick out when you, you've got 30-some seconds going now 23 seconds and you're about 25 yards away? Well, I mean, there's a chance you could break that play, but I think more importantly why that was a good call is you've got a new quarterback in, and a lot of times to get a new quarterback going, you see it again on every level, they might start out with a quick screen, a quick out, something short, something simple to complete that gets the quarterback feeling better and gets him going. We have 23 seconds to play in the first quarter, 13-6 Williamstown, but if you're tuning in, the big story here, the injury to quarterback Ed Newcomb, and there you see the Williamstown fans looking on, a few yawning. I guess they're bored early on here in the first half. Great game, glad you're with us here on Jones Intercable. Well, so much electricity here for the home opener to get things started, but, uh, and again, our, our cameraman is right near there. We'll probably get a report at halftime. Uh, and really, the electricity has gone out somewhat, and all these players have been tremendous, but Ed Newcomb, as you mentioned, Ted, probably is the one that can afford to lose the least. Second down and 14 upcoming. 23 seconds to play in the first half. Keeping it and running with it is Cooper. Cooper going up to the end zone, has a man there, and it's incomplete. Probably could have been intercepted by Steve Gilmartin, but he dropped it. And Damian Hyman came in and really laid a lick on Willis Cooper, so that's why that ball kind of floated up a little bit there. And there is Willis Cooper right now. And again, tough situation for any quarterback to come in, but that time he took the hit. Still managed to get the ball away, but a dangerous pass. Third and 15 upcoming. He might as well just throw it up to the end zone here regardless, Ed. Got 14 seconds to play. The clock will start on the snap. Third and 14. 15, excuse me. Let's see if Cooper is going to put another one up. He will. He's got a lot of time. Slips. Goes up to the end zone. Has a man there open. It's Williams. Incomplete. Pretty decent coverage by Pitts, but Williams almost came away with it. And a nice throw there by Cooper, and he had to stand in. The pocket was collapsing around him. Managed to get away a nice pass, but good coverage that time by Woodstown. Five seconds to play in the first half. Probably going to be the last play of the first half. Ed, you might as well go for the end zone again. And we might see trips left or trips right here. Line up three receivers to one side. And when you have people like Williams and Jackson and Crespo, you've got some talented athletes out there. And it'll be up to the Pitts duo to come up with the same coverage as it did now. And, and Woodstown, if they can knock this down, has to be very happy only down by seven at the half. Fourth and 15. Two receivers far side of the field. Probably going to go to the far side. Cooper with a quick pass incomplete. And the clock mysteriously adds an extra second or two off the clock. And that'll do it for action here in the first half. And we've got a game, folks. Williamstown leads it 13 to 6. Ed and I will be back with second half action right after this. Here's a big set of downs for both teams. 13-6 lead for Williamstown. Ed Woodstown did have a big kickoff return. There's the kickoff. It's a short kick, but it does the job. It gets down across the 20-yard line. And taking it back now for Woodstown is Gil Martin. Decent return up to about the 25 where he stopped. Now, we went down in the field at halftime, and we saw Ed Newcomb down in the field. Ed was in a lot of pain in case you missed it in the first half. He went down with an injury. A, a lot of speculation what it could be. It could be a hyperextension. The worst fear, and of course, we're hoping this is not true, is that there could be some kind of break in the arm. We're not sure as of yet, and we probably will not know until tomorrow. That's a big, big loss for Williamstown, and they're going to have a half here of a lot of pressure. They have a lead ed by six, but they're going to have the backup quarterback in, and defensively they have to set the tone right here. So Newcomb will not return. From the 26-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. And they go on the reverse, coming the other way is Pitts, and Pitts has some room, cuts up inside. Ben Pitts into Braves territory, down to the 40 on a well-designed play, but a penalty fly comes down late. Now again, Ed, you may add 15 because that came real late. That's a possibility of a face miss there at the end of the play. It's gonna be at least a carry, if they keep it, of about 30 yards. Big call here, Ed. there it is, the face miss, add 15. And that is a great way for Woodstown to start this second half. On that play, Ed, that gives Pitts 85 yards on three carries. Let's look at it again. Here you see Pitts, beautiful blocking in front, and the face mask is going to come up right there. 
both men got him on the face mask, and this is exactly what Williamstown did not want, Ed. Looked like Ron Marr and Tim Newcomb both, as Tad mentioned. Look at the steam, Ed. It's getting cold. I'm sure the brains are getting a little steamed here, too, as the game is getting tight. First down from the 27. Clark with the handoff. Nowhere to go on the outside for Jeff Cullen as he's stopped by Rich Williams with help from Tim Newcomb. James Obess in the backfield, number 52, did a great job there to knock that down and let him lose three yards. One more time, Ed, here in the face mask. There you see number 42, also the other player right there on the face mask. 42, of course, is Ron Marr. Good job, Obess. Good job, come on. Who's got him? We got to be tough. Well, the Braves sideline certainly doing what they can here. Second down and 12 from the 29 from Wolverines. By the way, passing head first half, they were 0 for 5. Now we get a whistle, and it looks like maybe the Wolverines took too much time. We'll see. It's either that or lining up on, on, on the wrong side of the ball or wrong formation. There it is. Wrong lineup. So Woodstown gets the big game plus the penalty, and now the penalty brings them back. That's so now that will drive them back to, let's see, it looks like at about the 33. That's their second time they've been penalized this game for 20 yards, Ed, and that is big for Williamstown in this situation because Woodstown hasn't shown much offense with the exception of Pitts, and it's going to be tough for them. From the 33-yard line, second down and 17 for the Wolverines. Now they tried to delay, and Williamstown reads it beautifully as Rich Williams stuffs Gil Martin in the backfield. That was just a missed blocking assignment on the right end. A great job by Williams, the junior, to get right back in there in the backfield. And if they get that block, and watch the right side of your screen up the top, the end just missed the block. Otherwise, they might get a big gain out of that. So suddenly third down and 23 for the Wolverines. We have 9.53 to go in the third. Williamstown without their quarterback, without their kicker, and without their defensive end, Ed Newcomb leading 13 to six. Clark will go back to pass, fires one deep downfield, and it is incomplete, looking for John Pitts. Triple coverage on the play by Williamstown. Maurice Jackson, the closest one there. Cooper also there, Lopez also there. I'm really surprised he threw that. As you mentioned, triple coverage there. A little bit shorter, about 10 yards down. He had a man open, but elected to go for it all. Now the punt team's in. And they go with the speed punt as they alternate some players in now. And again, they are on the Williamstown 40, but again, fourth and 23. So uh, right now, with a backup quarterback in for Williamstown, I'm sure Coach Ware will be happy to try and pin Williamstown deep in their own territory. Mars, is the lone man back for the Braves. There's the punt, it's a short pooch punt. And they will let it roll, and Woodstown downs it on the one yard line. Touchback. No, they don't, it is a touchback, as you saw it. We got a great look at it right there, and it looked like Ben Pitts was gonna get to it. It almost stopped, but his momentum carried him into the end zone, so Williamstown gets a break. Ben and John Pitts down there on the play, as you mentioned, Ed, they almost got that. And again, every time Woodstown needs a break, they haven't been able to get it. They had a chance there on the big run. Watch this here, and if he just gets a hand on it and gets out of the way, they're gonna get it. Right there at the last second, it just crossed the line. Oh, they are gonna give it to him at the two yard line, and on the first touch. Well, John Pitts missed it, and Ben Pitts got it. They will mark that one at the one. So the Braves have 99 yards to go. And the referee did say it was a touchback, and I'm really surprised they're going to put it at the one now. We saw the signal for the touchback, and now it is at the one. That actually looks like the correct call that is at the one-yard line. Now Woodstown's going to have to take a timeout, Ed. And, and Co Coach Fusatola just yelled out, you gave the touchback signal. He saw it too, but now they're spotting it at the one. So the, the Zebra's going to have to talk this over. There is Coach Fusatola waving his arm right there in the middle. Amy, if you could let us see that one more time, if we can get a look at the referee. It, it, it was an obvious, again, here's the play again. Great job by our Amy and everyone in the truck. Now watch the referee. The ball's touched there at the two. Now in comes number 21. Now the referee just to the right. There you see 18 Emil. 
saying no because the referee's saying touchback. But it, I think they did make the initial right call it, that he touched it at the two-yard line first, and that was where the ball should be down. So initially, I think they did make the right call by keeping it here now. It does look like justice was done on this chilly night here in Williamstown. The brave mascot of the cheerleaders into this one. A lot of... Uh, a lot of a festive atmosphere, as we said, and it's great to see the big crowd out here for the home opener. And this set of series here is what a season is made of. When they needed a big series against Delcy, they drove down the field and got it. This is their second big challenge of the year right here. Back in a quarterback now is John Ballerini. And they will try and get some breathing room. Puller does not get much on the quick hitter. So John Ballerini, who came in and then was replaced by Willis Cooper. Ballerini, he had and I get the feeling, Tad, barring uh, things going wrong, the Braves got in the locker room, Stop gathered themselves Cooper. at halftime. Coach Fusatola made his quarterback pick, and that was that. Well, we saw Cooper did a nice job, and I was very impressed with Willis Cooper, who's also a sophomore. Don't be surprised if somehow if Williamstown gets, a, gets some points here, you may see Cooper. I like the way he ran it. Maybe just better decisions now by Ballerini, deep in his own zone. From the three yard line second down and eight fumble Fumble on the play Woodstown has the football is there, are they in the end zone they are not but they're on the one yard line it looked like Pitts came up with the football and Ben Pitts recovers for the Wolverines and you'll see where the defensive player Ed got right in before the ball was handed off and that was why we had the mistake in the handoff and boy oh boy as you look at it again there, if we can bring it back maybe one more time, Amy, for it's just a little early. You'll see it on the handoff. Before the handoff is even made, the defensive player was right there. And now Woodstown in some serious, serious Braves real estate from the one-yard line, almost call it the half-yard line. First and goal for the Wolverines. And this is the runner in for the touchdown as Andy Romano goes in and Woodstown is within one off the turnover. What an incredible turn of events, Ed. Unbelievable. I don't think coming in anybody gave Woodstown a shot in this game. They have now tied it. Actually, they're behind by one, 13 to 12. They can get one point, Ed. Boy, I'll tell you. Keep in mind, as Tad mentioned earlier, Woodstown has not converted an extra point all year. They tried to fake on the extra point and went for two. So let's see what they do here down 13 to 12. They are lining up for two. Woodstown will go for the two-point call, Ed. So they go for the lead. Two-point conversion try. Romano again pushes towards the goal line. No signal yet. No. Did not make it by about half a yard. So Williamstown's lead holds, although it is down to one, 13 to 12 here in the third. Well, they elected to go right up the middle, right at the power of the Williamstown defense, and I'm surprised they didn't try and string it outside somewhere. And a little momentum switch. Even though Woodstown gets the touchdown, Williamstown's got to feel pretty good that they still hold the lead, Ed. Yeah, Williamstown mentally right now has to kind of catch their breaths and regroup. I, I don't blame Clint Ware because, again, as you mentioned, they're underdogs and they've had a terrible problem with their kicking game. Why not go for the two? They had the momentum going their way. Williamstown's a bit deflated on their sideline after the turnover. Good try, although they miss it by about half a yard. And again, that's something when you're a struggling program, you don't get that play, and that's something Woodstown is, Ed. And now they trail at 13-12. They got a break. Now again, to their favor, you have to remember, Newcomb is not in the game, and Williamstown already has had one fumble in this second half. Let's look at the replay coming up here in a second, Ed. Here's the big play in the backfield. The initial hit there was made by Jeff Cullen. And they lost the ball in the end zone. That's a tough play. Watch out for tricks. Watch out. So now Williamstown set to receive as back deep as Lopez, Marr, and Jackson. And kicking off will be Steve Gilmart. 13 to 12. Williamstown with the lead by one. And the Woodstown bench has certainly got the momentum in this portion of the game. High kick, and Marr will feel this one at his 20. Looks for the seam up the middle now, trying to break to the outside as Ron Marr tackled and brought down at the 35, as making the tackle once again with Steve Hurst. Steve Hurst has had a career in this game, Eddie. He's been all over the field, definitely the defensive MVP in this game. Now again, Williamstown with another shot to show something offensively, and you have some breathing room at least this time. From the 36-yard line, first and 10, we're Williamstown. Yeah. Keep it up. Come on, 
Let's see what the Braves can do now on offense. As once again, the quarterback is John Ballerini. Let's go, Let's go. Polar again has a hold on the right side, breaking away. Rich Polar into its down territory, tackled at the 28. Pitts finally brought him down. Well, that's Polar's biggest gain of the day. They got great blitzing pursuit by the two inside linebackers and a great job by Williamstown to get by him. Once Polar gets by them, he's got clear sailing and a big gain of about 35. Let's look at it again on the replay. We just missed the linebackers blitzing through, and it's a foot race here. Missing on the tackle there was Hall, but a good job there by Williamstown. is a, a risky call against the Woodstown defense. They come in on the blitz, and Williamstown takes it outside. From the 28-yard line of Woodstown, first and 10 for the Braves with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Fuller again, fumbles the football, Woodstown has got it right back as Cullen recovers for the Wolverines. They're still wrestling here, Nick. It looked like that gentleman in the pile, Cullen, came up with the football. So Williamstown coughs it right back, and Woodstown now takes over, trailing by just one. Big hit there and a big recovery, and Coach Fusatola really upset on the sidelines. And boy, Williamstown is really hurting themselves here, Ed, with turnovers. I know it's week three, and I know there's a lot of optimism, and I know there's a long way to go, and Williamstown has the lead, and we know their quarterback is going, but this could be one of the key points of the season, whichever way it goes for this team. This will be a false start against the Wolverines as jumping was Todd Ekes. And there is Frank Fusatola, and he is not a happy man on the sideline. Another turnover. I believe that's the third turnover of the game, Ed, for Williamstown. And turnovers are not going to win you games, Ed, and that's something they have to eliminate here. They're giving Woodstown, as you mentioned, an underdog, a chance to steal this game. Woodstown has also coughed the ball up a couple times tonight, but Tad, that was the stat so far. Three turnovers by the Braves. For the 23-yard line, first and 15 now for Woodstown, and a penalty, and it looks like this will be five more against the Wolverines. It's got to be lining up in the neutral zone. He's having a conversation there with Steve Hurst on the left end, and Hurst lined up in the neutral zone. And again, uh, there's a lot of that the deflation right now on the Williamstown sideline, especially because they got pumped up after the big run by Polar. Now they've got to find a way to stop Woodstown here, and the Wolverines are helping. Now from the 19-yard line, first and 20 for Woodstown. And don't forget, Ed, Woodstown passing is 0 for 5. Clark with a quick header up the middle, fumble on the play. Morgan with the big hit. And Williamstown saying they recovered. Let's see. No signal yet. They got it. And an eruption of joy for the men in blue as they get it right back. Looked like Willie Comfort came in there on the hit. Now, I have no idea who picked that up. It almost looked like in the middle of the pile there was Marcus Ramsour who recovered it, I believe. I want to do it! And right now, Williamstown has to feel very fortunate. Woodstown has given the opportunities right back. And now Williamstown in business from the 18-yard line, first and 10 for the Braves. And the handoff to Polar plowing towards that left side and engulfs his defenders, gets about six. Polar at about 200 pounds, you see him has a lot of nice size. He is just very tough for Woodstown to take down. Tad, I have not seen Nick Lopez carry the football as much so far in this game. That could partially be because of injury. Again, he had a back muscle that was bothering him last week, and we'll see if it's something that is hindering him once again. Well, in the first half, Eddie had nine carries for 83 yards. Officially, they give him four, second and six for the Braves. On the 13-yard line, a little misdirection, and Williams squirts his way up to about the 10. He'll be about two, three yards short of the first half. And I wish I had a dime for every time a lineman for Woodstown was there to make the initial hit for a loss, and Williamstown has done a great job of keeping his shoulders square and moving up the field. Great running. From just inside the 10, third down, and officially two, it's really about two and a half. 
probably two down territory too without the kicker. Jackson now in the backfield with Polar. Nick Lopez also in there. And it's Polar. Bowling ball is his way up the middle to about the five. Power running, Eddie does a great job in that power situation. Picks up three, very close. Now they do give him the first down. From just outside the five, it'll be first and goal for the Braves. Clock down to 6.17 to go in the third quarter. Williamstown 13, Woodstown 12. With Williamstown quarterback Ed Newcomb out of this football game due to injury. From the six yard line, first and 10 for Williamstown. This time it's Nick Lopez towards the end zone and in for the touchdown. Turnovers have played a big factor in this game, and here we see the touchdown. Great blocking in front, and wow. What a job by Lopez. He goes in the end zone. That's his third touchdown of the year, and now the Braves have some breathing room. And by the time John Pitts, who was the first man to get to Lopez, was able to lunge at him, Lopez was already about a yard away from the end zone. Now with the kicker out, let's see. Williamstown might go for two with the score 19 to 12. And they will go for two. Going for two this year, Ed, they are one for two. They have tried to pass it both times. And Ballerini this time will hand it off. Lopez is hit and knocked down, so they don't get the two, but they do have the 19 to 12 lead. We will take a break here at Williamstown. We'll be back with more. Back here in Monroe Township with the kickoff after the Williamstown touchdown. There's our story, 19 to 12, Braves. And there's the kickoff for Williamstown. And this will be Pitts taking it back, looking for room up the middle. John Pitts is brought down at about the 32. Tad, uh, a lot of turnovers in this game so far, no question about that, but the bottom line is Williamstown has capitalized just that much more than Woodstown has. Well, both teams have scored off the turnovers, Ed, and Woodstown has to be fortunate that they do have 12 points on the board because they barely have any offense to speak of. And if you're Woodstown, you have to think eight-man front for quite some time now when you get, when you get on the defensive end. Uh, simply because Ed Newcomb is not in, and with all due respect to John Ballerini, he's coming in cold tonight, literally with the temperatures tonight. Here comes the Woodstown offense, and they will start from the 33. We have 5.50 to go in the third quarter. They look to get things set as J.R. Clark will step in. Yes, Jeff Cullen lined up as his fullback. Long count and back to pass is Clark to the left side and the pass is caught as Pitts pulls it in and is knocked out of bounds at about the 44. Well, they like to run that play, Ted. When they line up in that power back formation, you might see a lot of passes on, a, on that short, quick out to the outside. Well, that's the first pass that they've completed all evening here, Ed. It's a nine yard gain. So they get the, what is close to the first down, hasn't been ruled a first down yet. And it looks like this will be a first down. Let us see. Yep, they're moving the chains. Bear with us one moment. Piers, we uh, might have an audio problem here with Tad's microphone. We'll uh, get to that in just one moment. So now Woodstown does have the first down, and they will spot it from the 43-yard line. Come on now, let's go, Willie. Braves leading 19 to 12. Wolverines trying to tie it up. And Clark will take a timeout. The Williamstown side likes that. And unofficially, Ed, I believe that's their second timeout that they've taken here. So they're only going to have one remaining as they try and get back in this game. And while we have a moment, I'd like to tell you about another one of our great sponsors here on Jones Intercable Channel 13, our good friends at Gloucester County Federal Savings Bank. They are your community-based lender offering friendly personal service. They are your bank. Also offer affordable housing loans, auto loans, first-time home buyers get great deals, home equity loans. Also, local and mutual funds. They've been in the business for over 90 years. 
They've been in since 1903. Stop in and see Bob Aarons and everybody at the great locations at Gloucester County Federal Savings. Again, they have locations in Washington Township, Monroe Township, Pittman, and Glassboro. That is Gloucester County Federal Savings. Let's not forget our good friends. Let's point out we should not forget our good friends at Life Care Medical Center located on 601 North Main Street in Glassboro, New Jersey. Phone number is 881-5800. Offering the most complete outpatient diagnostic testing, physical therapy, and sports medicine facility in the Tri-County area. MRIs, physical therapy, sports medicine, medicine, pool therapy as well, complete industrial health care, complete laboratory services. Give Chip Krause a call at 881-5800 and please tell your sponsors that you saw their ad here on Channel 13 and please go out and support them there, what makes high school football possible on the station. From the 43-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. Quick hitter to Cullen up the middle. Cullen with some power running right by Rich Puller as he gets across midfield. Strong run by a guy who gives it his all every time he carries the football, Jeff Cullen. And going back to the play where they got the first down, Ed, Clark's got to feel pretty good about himself. That was his first completed pass. He's going to have to throw the ball some to get them back in the game. From midfield, second down and four for the Wolverines. Clock down to 446 to go in the third. Watch your tackle! Watch your tackle! Right between 61 and 9, baby! Square up, Jimmy! Right out, Jimmy! there is Cullen again, and this time he meets a wave of blue. Nick Lopez and company there to knock him back. Well, that's going to bring up an interesting call. It's going to bring up a third down and about four from midfield. And they may have to try to take the ball inside. They haven't been able to get a whole lot up the middle. Pitts has been their big yardage game. He has three carries for 85 yards. Besides that, Cullen Ed, four carries for 15. And we heard a whoa sound. That coming from the Woodstown coaches box. And he will be set to take the punt if indeed Woodstown is punting here. He almost had to play for the field position, Ed. That, now they're lining up, and now it looks like they're going to go. Let's see. It's either that or a quick pooch punt. Let's see. He's going. No, they're going to run. It's Hurst, and he stopped. Brought down by Willie Cuthbert. I don't know, Ed. I got mixed feelings on that. If you're going to go for it, you might as well line up. The only thing you did is move one player off the ball. The guy who, the punter there, was 10 yards off the ball. That gives the defense time to react. It was a nice effort, and I admire Coach Ware for trying, but I think if you're going to go for it, you might as well sit up with the line of scrimmage. And there was a 10-man front. And now Williamstown takes over on offense. First and 10 from the 48. And going outside with lots of room is Lopez. Nick Lopez down to about the 40-yard line. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been informed we'd like to apologize. Apparently, we had some audio or rather video difficulties, excuse me. And uh, those have been corrected. And so now we have uh, sights and sound here at Williamstown. That's probably why our wide receiver couldn't hold the ball. He couldn't see it. it was, he was in black screen. He couldn't catch it. And again, Lopez on that run with plenty of room in front of him. Has the first down. So here come the Braves from just inside the 40. 40 yard line, leading 19 to 12 here in the third. Ballerina to Polar, lots of room for Rich Polar breaking away, upended at about the 24. And a penalty fly comes down. And I think this might be a personal foul, and it looks like it might go against Williamstown. Let's see. Woodstown indicating that, and that came in late. That looked like a possible clip or an illegal block. We'll see. They're still looking it over at their referee and Mark Morey talking it over with the umpire. There you see him. Here's a big call. Unsportsmanlike against Williamstown. And as you can hear from the Williamstown bench, they do not agree with the call. There's the man who was flagged. That's Marcus Ramsier, but the coaching staff is telling him, hey, we didn't think it was the right call. Whether it is or it isn't, that's for you to judge at home, but a good job of the coaching staff to get their player account Well, as you look back at the actual play, though, Ed, Woodstown gambled and blitzed again up the middle, and Williamstown was able to get by it with some good trap blocking up the middle. Woodstown has attempted to blitz on a run three times, been unsuccessful all three times. Now, that came in late. If that came in after the play, it will still be first down. But instead of first and 10, 
It'll be about first and 23 or 24 as they get it lined up. It looks like they'll mark it from the spot of the foul. First down at about an eight Kings limousine length from the first down marker. <laughs> they'll call it now officially, it, they say first down and 20, but that looks a little bit more like first down and 23 or 24 for Williamson. Lopez has some room, looking to break outside. Good tackle made on Lopez as Pat Ray is able to knock him down. And you can see Woodstown is getting great pressure over the center. They are almost in the quarterback's face on every handoff. As soon as Williamstown gets that handoff in, they get right around the pressure, but they gotta watch it in that center position. Good pursuit up the middle. And they'll spot it just outside the 34 and they have to get to just around the 13, so we'll call it second down and 21 for Williamstown. Braves leading 19 to 12 late in the third. Whoops. This will cost Woodstown five, is jumping off side of the middle. It looked to be possibly Pat Ray, we'll see. Boy, turnovers and now penalties starting to play a big factor in this game. Check that, that's Omar Hall who jumped off side of the middle, so lots of turnovers in this one, lots of penalties. And right now, Williamstown holding that seven point lead. We'll spot it now at the 29, so call it second at about 16 for the Braves. Back up. Back up. Back up. Ray's trying to get something going here. Another score here, despite all the problems that both sides have, could really be the backbreaker for Woodstown. We'll see. Get outside, get outside! Fuller with a quick hitter up the middle, plowing his way down into Woodstown territory to about the 22. That's a big run there by Puller because now it makes it about a third and nine, which is a makeable play. Right, another tackle made by Steve Hurst. They're gonna spot it at the 22, so call it third down and nine for the Braves. They lead 19 to 12 as this third quarter winds down. And again, in case you're just joining in, Ed Newcomb, the quarterback for Williamstown, went down with an arm injury. No word yet as to what it could be. Ballerini will hand it to the outside to Maurice Jackson. Gets a fine block, cuts to the outside and is brought down. A terrific block on the outside by Williamstown. Bring him up was James Obest. Well, that's Jackson's third carry of the game, Eddie. Got some great wedge blocking in front and great speed to get around the outside. And Woodstown had their chance, Ed. It was first down and 20-something. As we look at it again, look at the wedge blocking on the outside. They even get a blocker down the field down there. It's Obest and a first down carry for Jackson. Boy, I, you really have to tip your catch to Williamstown. When they needed the big plays, Ed, they're getting them. Still about seven yards away from pay dirt. First and goal for the Braves, leading by seven. 36 seconds to go in the third. They give it to Richie Williams towards the end zone. He's close. Looks like he'll be stopped right about the one. Again, it's all blocking up front. Woodstown just not able to react, and they're getting pounded to death, Ed. Now they say his knee was down a bit close, a bit further away, so they'll spot it at the two as they strike up the war drums here in Williamstown. Third quarter is going to wind down probably before this play gets off, and it will. So the third quarter comes to an end. End of three here at Williamstown. Braves leading 19 to 12, looking to stretch their lead. We will take a break and be back for fourth quarter action. Ed Bank and Tad Kazaneski back here in Monroe Township for the start of the fourth quarter. Williamstown facing a second and goal on the Woodstown two, leading 19 to 12. And the quarterback is John Ballerini in for the injured at Newcomb. Lopez and Polar power backs in the backfield. And it's Rich Polar with a quick hitter stopped. A fine defensive play by the Wolverines. And it looks like, let's see, is that Hurst under the pile? Yes, it was, making the stop. And you can get it. You can see the great pursuit that Woodstown gets right over the center. If you're Williamstown, you try and go to the right of either tackle, and I think they'll be in good shape. You just don't want to run it right up the middle. They're getting great pressure. Third and goal from the three, and again, this is automatic if you don't make a kick the field goal if Ed Newcomb is in the game, but he is not. 
So a third and goal from the three, you're probably looking at two cracks at the end zone. Just underway here in the fourth. This time it's Lopez, loses the football, is able to get his own fumble. So a bad exchange and Lopez able to fall on the fumble. Williamstown gets a break. Well, you are kidding at a, a major league break on that one. It's a ball you should probably. Now spotted at the six yard line. Again, we're having some audio problems, so bear with us. Fourth and goal from the six, and the Braves will go. And they'll look to go to the outside to Maurice Jackson, trying to cut outside, loses the football. Williamstown falls on it, but it doesn't matter. And Woodstown comes up with a huge stop early in the fourth. Jeff Cullen did a great job leaving the charge, and that's what Woodstown had to do, Ed, to get themselves in the game. And that's really the first time that Williamstown needed a big play and didn't get it. And the Wolverines have life. They've dodged a few bullets tonight, and now they look up, and they're only down by seven. And that fumble also gives them a little bit more breathing room out to the 13. Uh, in the past here, this is where Woodstown's had some problems. At passing, they've only completed one pass for nine yards, and they've turned it over a handful of times. They may even have to take a timeout here, and they have. They've taken their third timeout, Ed. And that could cost them down the road in this quarter. Well. Again, a lot of great games coming up here on Jones Inner Cable. Next week, our first trip to Edgewood, taking a look at those Edgewood Eagles taking on Camden Catholic. And, you know, Tad, they had to start out with Eastern and Woodrow Wilson. Now that the worst is over for Edgewood, this is a team that I think if they get their offense on track, if they can kind of hold their own, might be able to sneak into contention in the division. They've got some fun players to watch here, and they're always a lot of fun for us to cover here on Jones Inner Cable. And that's a team, again, you have to look out for. It's just when you play in a tough division like that, every game is a world beater. And again, two weeks from tonight, they're expecting a crowd upwards of about 5,000 down in Washington Township. They're expecting the largest crowd of the year in South Jersey for the Renegades and the Minutemen. That, enough said. I think that about sums it up. That's why yeah, when they put the new conference together, you start maxing up these games. We knew about that game last spring, and when it lined up, we knew that was going to be a big one. It'll be real exciting to be out there here with Jones Intercable. And a big one here for Williamstown with first and 10 for the Wolverines. Spotted on the 13-yard line. Clark will go back to pass. Under a bit of pressure, incomplete, but a penalty fly comes down as Tim Newcomb interfered that time with Ben Pitts. Obvious pass interference. It'll be an automatic first down on the play. And you really got to watch it if you're J.R. Clark, a quarterback, yet he really loops that ball up there. And that's a case where Newcomb was going for the interception, just ran into the defender. Let's look at this again. Now watch the length of time this ball's in the air. I mean, that's, that's a ball Newcomb's going after and after three yards up the field. That's no big deal. But again, with high school football, they will move it 15 yards up. And that'll be an automatic first down. That'll bring us up to about the 28 and a half yard line. And you saw a good look on the second replay. Uh, clearly pass interference. So first down for the Wolverines, and they'll move it up to the 28 yard line. 10-20 to go in regulation, as we have said since last year. Oh boy. 10-20 to go in regulation with the score 19 to 12. Oh boy. <laughs> Of course, uh, overtime installed last year in high school football. First game to use it and win, first team to use it and win it was Edgewood against Highland a year ago. From the 28 yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. Clark will go back to pass again. Nobody open after having some time to look. Now flips to the outside, oh incomplete. Nice play by Ron Moore to break up the pass intended for Ben Pitts. It's a nice job by Pitts to come back for the ball, but that's a ball that Clark has to eat. Either has to throw it away or just keep with the ball because there was double coverage on the far side on Pitts. And again, Ed, Clark very lucky that pass wasn't intercepted. So now a second down and 10 for Woodstown. And the Wolverines are only going to get so many chances in this game. Uh, w Williamstown has helped with a lot of turnovers tonight, but the law of averages catches up with you eventually. Another big play man has been John Pitts. He's the guy to keep an eye on, number 26. 
from the 28 yard line. Second down and, get, and 10 and Clark will throw again. Pocket collapses, he gets away. Penalty fly comes down as Clark gets to about the 32. And that was in the area of holding, throw, hold by the back judge and it is holding. So this is going to come back and I'm sure Williamstown will move him back. And this really might turn out to be a battle of field position more than anything else down the stretch with, again, Newcomb gone and with Woodstown's kicking game struggling today. Here it is again. They're gonna see here as he'll drop back the pass. The holding will come on the top side of your screen. You can almost see it there. The man was tackled down. Nice call by the official. And boy, Woodstown really hurting themselves with penalties. They had six penalties for 45 yards in this game. And again, with the expectations now set for Williamstown after a win like last week, uh, if they manage to come away with this game with a victory, that's great, but they realize they will have to play better when the competition gets better. Well, you've got your, your Delsies coming, or I assume you got your Deptfords coming up, your Gloucester Catholics coming up. They play Glassboro this year. Real tough games the second half of the season. Second down and 25 now for Woodstown. As the hold came behind the line of scrimmage. Clark will hand it off to the outside. Not much room for Omar Hall. He's stacked up and brought down. And another fine play made by Williamstown's James Obes. He's had a fine game tonight. Newcomb also in there. Both those young men read it all the way, strung it wide. And boy, I don't know what Woodstown has in their playbook here on third and about 25. Uh, the, the biggest thing here is watch out for the interception. Clark, I really think, is going to be susceptible to the to an interception, especially if he throws it to our side of the field, which is the long side of the field. And because they're so deep, it's hard to believe they would just try and run something and then punt it away because we talked about the field position. Right now, Woodstown has to, if nothing else, get it upfield and get some breathing room. And they do send both Pitts brothers, Ben and John, to the near side. Clark instead will pitch it to the outside, and Andy Romano dances through one man, excuse me, Cullen through another, still on his feet. Gets away from another tackler, Cullen with a fine effort, but he'll come up about 10 short, as Willis Cooper finally brought him down. Cullen on about a 20-yard gain on that, Ed, and that saves the punter some breathing room. And again, with this field position battle and time ticking away, 8.30 to play, that's a big play for Woodstown. So the Wolverines will punt, here it is again. And if you're Williamstown, Ed, you got to be kicking yourself here because you had a chance to really pin them down. That's just a great individual effort by Cullen, who is a senior. Well, we talked about the L word all before the game, Tad, yeah, the, the right. letdown, and it's happened. You are absolutely right. And let's give Woodstown a little bit of credit. They have been spectacular, but they've capitalized on some Williamstown mistakes. Now the Braves drop back, and that wow. one is almost blocked, and a fine kick, and it's fielded by Moore on the line drive. Marr dances up to about the 42 where Williamstown takes over. Yeah, Woodstown coming off a blowout against Delcy and then a blowout against Pennsville. Uh, you really have to give them credit. And Coach Ware went to the gadget playbook, got that wide receiver option pass for a touchdown. They have played hard tonight. Well, you don't coach for 31 years without picking up a trick or two. And they came in the game without, with only scoring one touchdown. They have two in this game, but again, They've capitalized on a couple big mistakes that Williamstown has handed to them. And this is a case now where if their defense can hold it, there's under eight minutes to play. They still have a legitimate shot to put this game into overtime or even possibly win it. Just to put that in perspective, 31 years, he started coaching about a year and a half after Lyndon Johnson took over for John F. Kennedy. Polar staggering towards his feet, finally runs into Hurst and picks up about three. Boy, Hurst has been the entire defense. He's made just about 90% of the tackles today. And there's a man hobbling up, that's Polar. And he reached down towards his right hamstring area, uh, but he's trying to walk it off right now. Let's see, he's trying to stretch it out now. Well, again, with the injuries, you catch a bit of a break in that you have Clearview next week, which is not the biggest powerhouse, but again, Clearview probably would beat a Woodstown, so you can't say that game would be a pushover. Clearview has some offensive talent on their team, Ed. Right now, Woodstown looking like they can play with a lot of teams tonight. Richie Williams' turn, and he gets up to midfield before being hit by Hurst. Who else? And brought down emphatically. <laughs> man, oh man, Mr. Hurst, a great job. And credit the front line blocking of Williamstown. Clear a big hole. If it wasn't for Hurst, that probably goes for a first down. Here comes a big third down and about three from midfield. And they will spot it right there. You see it. And here's the replay again. Take a look at it from ground level. You get a great shot at Hurst, number 61. Stands him up and plants him down. Hurst has been very impressive in this game. 
No secret what Williamstown will probably do here. Random Marty, or Ballerini, excuse me, has not put one up yet. Richie Williams strings it to the outside. First down and more. Richie Williams has one man to beat, and he goes in for the touchdown. That could be the backbreaker with 6.14 to go. It's the first touchdown of the year for Williams, Ed. Once he gets around the corner, nobody has a shot for him. It's 50 yards in the book, and that's the nail in the coffin for Woodstown. And again, it's just too much talent from, Wood from Williamstown in this game. And even though it was a little bit of a scare, they're going to come away with the win in this one, Ed. Again, sometimes your town alone can get you through a game like this. I'm sure Frank Fusatola will have a few words to say to his team afterwards in this game, but still, Williamstown right now in excellent shape, 25 to 12, and they will go for two here again with Newcomb out of the game. Ballerini to Lopez to the outside, and he gets in for the two-point conversion as he gets plenty of room to run, and Williamstown has stretched their lead on the two-point conversion to 27 to 12, and there he is, Richie Williams. A well-deserved rest for that young man there. And they were scared in this game a little bit, Ed. You know, as you mentioned, I think the letdown was the key word for the night. They just expected to show up and take the win. And Woodstown has hung tough. Again, in the first half, they hardly had any offense, but they managed to hang around. But now it's pretty much cruising time with 6.14 to play. Again, Woodstown hanging tough and Ed Newcomb out of the game. Those two factors combined to make what was for the most part a close game throughout much of the night, but now with 6.14 to go, Clint Ware might be out of uh, might be out of tricks in the book. You just hope you get a big kickoff return here. It gives you something to go on. They have to score rather quickly. If they do happen to score, then they're obviously going to come back with the onside kick, but being they've only scored three touchdowns all year, two in this game, you know they really have their work cut out. Hey, nice catch. Sign them up. Got the wool hat on, too. Miniature football, which the cheerleaders toss out. Hello, there's a, I'll tell you what, Dad, there's a, a future receiver for the Braves right there. Oh. Mom says that. We got it. Good throw. That's it. Hold it with two hands. You've got the lead, 27-12. No fumbles here. No turnovers. So the Braves will kick off. And again, the other concern for Williamstown is the health of Ed Newcomb. Question is whether he'll be ready or not for next week against Clearview. There's a fine kickoff as it goes deep, and it's bobbling, picked up now by Pitts. Pitts, there's that return to the outside. He gets to about the 38, and that is something Woodstown has done well all night. They've had good kick returns by Pitts, continually getting 20 and 30 yard returns on every kick, but now here's where the pressure is on for Woodstown, and this is where they really haven't been able to generate a lot of offense. Passing-wise, Clark is one for eight, Ed, for nine yards. And because of the length of this game, as we'll get the replay here, we will not be having a post game. We'll be wrapping it up as soon as the game is over. Again, he gets a good seam up the middle of the field. Good job to return that one. From the 39-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. Williamstown 27, Woodstown 12. And Clark drops back to pass with time in the pocket. Shot puts it over the middle, complete. Not much there, as it's a short gain. Picking it up was Kyle Spears as he managed to make his first reception of the night. And Williamstown will give that one up all night as we look at Spears catching that one. A gain of four yards. In order for Woodstown to get back in this game, they have to go down the field. A five-yard gain isn't going to help them. And the clock winds down to 5.38 to go. An official's timeout here momentarily. While that happens, Pat Ray gets a chance to go off to the sideline for Woodstown. Now they start rolling the clock again as Woodstown comes to the line from the 43-yard line, second down, and call it six. Clark back to pass again. This time the pocket collapses, gets outside, incomplete as he was looking for Pitts. And again, a surge on that side by James Obest. Pitts made a nice effort to almost come away with that, but good defensive pressure up the middle by Williamstown. It may have been rushing four guys, if that. They're pretty much staying back deep and don't want to get beaten on the big play here. Third down and six. 5.18 to go in the fourth quarter. 
and I know there's only 5.18 to go, but this could be fourth down territory here. Four down territory. You, you have to, Ed. With 5.18 to play, you have to keep going. You have to move the ball. And Clark with a quick handoff to Cullen. And Cullen, ankle tackle by Polar, about half a yard short of the first down. If they're smart, they'll ask for a measurement here. See if they can get it to stop the clock and regroup. It's, it's probably close enough to measure. They may actually even have it now on the mark. The referee will stop the clock, Ed. I think they, they will have it, but you're probably going to have to bring the chains on to measure it. Well, Coach Ware is smart, and so he will call for the measurement. And uh, it looks like he's, uh, now they're now the referees have called a, a timeout, and they will measure it. But it looks like he's going to be about a yard. Actually, now with the spots it's had. close, Ed. It, it all depends close. on that spot. I mean, it's. If they didn't get it, they're within an inch or two. It's, it's that close. Clock stopped at exactly five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It has been, quite, quite frankly, an ugly night on the field as far as penalties, fumbles, and of course the injury. Here comes your measurement, Ed. Wait, it's, it's just a little bit short. About four inches short. This is where Woodstown should have called the play in the huddle. They're going to come out right away and go right after it. You got to look at it right there, and they will go for it on fourth down. And they might just run the football here, try and pick up the first down, and line up while they move the chains. Fourth and about a half a yard for Woodstown. And the clock should be run, and there we go. The official did signal it now. The clock would. Waiting for the official signal. Thought he had signaled before, but now the clock runs. Clark on the keeper, and he's got the first down. Nice play by Woodstown as Clark had the seam on the left side. Well, it keeps their hopes alive again, but with 4.49, the clock will start running as soon as they set to change. They've got to get a play in quickly, Ed, and start moving with some no-huddle offense. And they are still huddling, and while they move the chains, they do have the time to huddle and call the play. Now the referee blows his whistle, and right away they break the huddle. 4.45 to go from the 49-yard line of Williamstown. Back to pass again is Clark. Guns went over the middle, incomplete. They roll an incompletion to Spears. And if he catches that ball, as Tad mentioned before, it's only about a five-yard pickup. You have to look down the field, but again, the problem is the three defensive backs are starting 15 yards off the ball. So you almost have to take what they can give you in this situation and hope you can get a big run after the catch, but you have to catch the ball first. Clock stopped with 4.30 to go now. Second down and 10 for Woodstown. Wolverines have been able to keep this close and have had a gutty effort tonight after two humbling losses, but their backs are against the wall now. Clark with a quick out to the outside to Pitts. Pitts trying to string it to the outside. Tackle by Tim Newcomb. So John Pitts picks up about six, and that'll be a third down. Not a bad call on the far side. You have one-on-one -on -one coverage at the far side. Trying to break some there. It's a good call. And again, when the game ends, we will keep it right here and wrap it up for what has been a, <laughs> face it, a long football game due to the penalties and some of the turnovers. And now with Woodstown having the incompletions, and for the most part, Ed, Clark has done a decent job of getting there. He's had about four or five drops. Overall, he's three for 12 now for 19 yards, but about three or four more of them should have been caught. Third down and four from the 43-yard line of Williamstown. And Clark to the outside again. Here's the wide receiver option, but nobody there. It looked like John Pitts zigged when he should have zagged because he cut in and the pass went out. Pitts was doing it out, the receiver threw a post pattern, and again, Williamstown read it all the way, the defensive backs were back there, a good effort again by Coach Ware, but the defense was there. Well, this will be it for Woodstown if they can't convert, fourth down and four, 3.38 to go in the fourth, and if they are unsuccessful, Williamstown will be able to get the football, and barring a turnover with another first down or two, can run the clock out. Cullen with the quick hitter. Boy, he's close. They Very just, close. They just made it, Ed, by about a half a yard. Again, the thing problem's going to be there. The clock's going to run here as soon as they set the chains. 
Boy, and again, give Woodstown credit, Ted. As you mentioned, they just they will not die. They're hanging in there, but the problem is they're just taking too long, Ed. They have two first downs, but they've taken three minutes on the clock to move 20-some yards, and that's just not going to do it. You almost have to take a chance and go deep as the clock continues to roll. Well, they tried Gilmartin again on that wide receiver option, but it did not work, so Clark will throw. Short pass outside, incomplete, looking for Pitts. And good coverage on the play by Tim Newcomb. Except for that one penalty, Newcomb's done a good job on the coverage coming in. Newcomb saw it all the way, had a good lick on Pitts. Pitts a little slow getting up, and Newcomb has played a good game defensively. 3.16 to go. Incidentally, on that play to Gilmartin, since the pass came from behind the line of scrimmage to the receiver who threw it, technically that's a lateral, so it's legal that he can throw the football downfield. From the 38-yard line, second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Clark will throw again. Hit as he throws downfield, nobody there. And guess who, James Obest in on the pressure. Well, there's either two things happened on that one. He either threw it away, which was a heck of a play by Clark, just to get, now a flag goes down late, right in front of the Williamstown huddle. Looking right at it is Rich Williams. Williams may have just got flagged front sportsman like, and he did. He did, and that'll cost Williamstown dearly. And 15 yards and a first down, Ed. What was Williams doing? If it was Williams, what was he doing? Now coming off the field is Ramsour, which would indicate it may have been against him. Yeah, it must have been Ramsor. His <laughs> coach just grabbed him by the face mask and is not happy. You got it. It's a shame, Ed, because it's a good job by coach to talk to him here. You can't be taking 15 yard penalties in this situation. The game was all but over. He just gave Woodstown life. And the clock stops as well, so it is on the 23 with 3.10 to go. That'll kill you as a coach. That makes your hair fall out, Ed. That is a, just a tough, tough play. And now they will run the clock, first and 10 for Woodstown. And now this will be a five yard penalty against the Wolverines, so the yellow flag's getting a workout in this one. Well, Williamstown has been penalized now 55 yards on five penalties with Woodstown on that one. They've now been penalized six times for 50 yards. Penalties and turnovers, we've seen a lot of them. And again, with all due respect to Woodstown, Williamstown cannot do this against Glassboro, Gloucester, Catholic, Kingsway, or Deptford. Now, again, they have to play the kind of game they played last week at against Delson. You have to play a perfect game. Had a quick power outage through no fault of our people downstairs. And now on the replay, a quick hit on second down. Jason Morgan gets in and drills Pat Ray on that second and six carry. All you missed while you were away was a four yard run. And now the clock down to 220. This will be a third down and six. Well, if you're trying for one touchdown, Ed, this isn't a bad job by Woodstown. It's just they need two touchdowns to get back in the game, and the, with the way they're going now, they're just running out of time. And that's even if they get in the end zone here with under two minutes to play in the game. Officially 158 and counting from the 18-yard line, third down and six for the Wolverines. The pass again is Clark. Nobody open, forces one into double coverage and it's incomplete. Tim Newcomb breaks it up again and he got help from Polar. Not a good selection by Clark there. Almost threw it right between two linebackers. And again, Ed, you gotta throw the ball deeper. It's fourth and six now with 148 to play. First thing now is to get the first down. But they're just taking a, way too much time. And part, part of it is, too, and, and, and again, there's deep coverage by Williamstown, but the Woodstown receivers maybe could yeah, do a better job of getting downfield, which they've been unable to do. Well, fourth and six. Again, Woodstown down to their last breath. They've come off the respirator a couple of times, and now in fourth and six, the quick hitter again to Cullen. This time it will not work, and the Braves will take over. Little surprise there, too. They, they've gone with the trap the last two times on fourth down, and Williamstown caught off guard. That time they were not caught off guard. A good job of doing their homework, using their heads, and Ed, that should just about do it. And with Woodstown out of timeouts, the Braves will be able to run out the clock and breathe a big sigh of relief tonight. Again, Ed, the bottom line is they won the game. That's all that matters is they won the game. And sometimes you win games like this. Sometimes you don't play well. Sometimes it looks ugly. But as you mentioned, Tad, the bottom line is, as Marty Schottenheimer says, what goes in that column on the left-hand side? You won the game.
Again, the clock stopped on the change of possession, but Maurice Jackson will take it outside. Jackson smartly cuts in to keep the clock running. And again, Woodstown cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts, so you may have to run two more plays tops to end this game. They give him six, so Williamstown, even without a first down here, should be able to run it out. So You can almost just kneel it down. It No timeouts left. The clock will continue to run. And with the, the way things have been going fumble-wise tonight for Williamstown, let's see if they do that here. As Ballerini comes over center. And they will run it to Polar up the middle, first down as he gets up to about the 38. And that will really do it now with 50 seconds and counting here in the fourth. Well, and it looks like now they're 3-0, and looking at 4-0, if they can beat Clearview last week. You know, the last time Williamstown was 4-0 was back in 1981. And in game five, they lost to what is now a division rival, Gloucester Catholic. But what a turnaround. If they can win next week, best season start since 1981. Now they will probably go down on one knee. And for Woodstown, it doesn't get any easier for them next week. Uh, they have the unenviable task of taking on Gloucester Catholic. And of course, Gloucester Catholic near the top of the division right now. Woods, Williamstown now at the top, 3-0. and and Again, they won the game. It wasn't pretty yet. They won the game, and hopefully they can get their quarterback back. And after Clearview, as we know for Williamstown, Glassboro, Gloucester, Catholic, Kingsway, and Deptford await. Not the prettiest one in the world, but I'm sure the coaching staff will take it as the clock will wind down on a Williamstown home opener that sees the Braves go to 3-0. Seconds tick off, and that will do it as Williamstown wins by a score of 27-12 against a gutty Woodstown Wolverine squad. And it wasn't as dramatic as last weekend, but again, they won the game, they were expected to win, they got the win, now you look on to Clearview. So we will take a quick break, a quick break, and when we come back, we will have a wrap-up right after this. <laughs> 